Welcome back. Women and sometimes men who try to get out of violent or just unhappy marriages often risk their lives in the process, and sometimes they don't even know it. Two weeks ago today, a young photographer named Sonia Khan was found shot to death in her own condo in downtown Chicago. She was preparing to move back to her hometown, Chattanooga, Tennessee, after divorcing her husband of less than a year. You didn't have to be a close friend to know that. Khan shared her whole life, the marriage, the split, her family's intense disapproval of her divorce, all of it on social media. Presumably Khan's ex, a man named Rahil Ahmed, saw it too all posted online. On July 18th, Ahmed's family reported him missing from the Atlanta suburb where he had been living, but they were pretty sure where he went. Sure enough, when the Georgia police asked Chicago police to check on Sonia Khan, they found Ahmed right beside her, also dead. With a pistol in his hand and also a suicide note was left nearby. Two days later and 4,000 miles away, a young wife and mother to be named Dana Alatabai was stabbed to death on the side of a highway in Honolulu. Her husband, an active uh, duty Marine named Bryant Tejada Castillo, then turned the knife on himself but survived. And tonight he's charged with second degree murder. Here too, uh, the internet served as a window into a very stormy relationship. I wanna play part of Alatabi's YouTube post on uh, her husband's infidelity. My husband, he deployed to Japan and on the third day he downloaded Tinder. All his pictures on his profile were of him not wearing his wedding ring. I asked him about it and he was like, oh no, that's not me. I got hacked. I got hacked. And I was like, dude, I know it's you. And then when I just didn't let it go, he was like, well, you deserve it. You were going to cheat on me anyway, so I'm going to do it too. Oh, so awful. I want to turn now to uh, Yelena Genova, a news reporter from Insider who has been following these stories very, very closely. Uh, Yelena, I mean, that video right there that Dana posted, it's just so heartbreaking to see these videos and know how all of this turned out. It is. It's super heartbreaking. Um, it's definitely something that happens frequently, I would say. It's very unsurprising to me that it happened um, because social media allows you to have so much reach, right? So presumably these men are following their ex-wives every single move. I think what's so disturbing, though, is that these women document their journey on social media in real time. And, and it's almost like as an outsider, you can you can almost see what, what's coming in a way. You can, yeah. And domestic violence is, it's rampant. It's something that happens all the time. In Dana's case, it happened outside the walls of a private home. But that doesn't mean that it's not an act of domestic violence, right? Because domestic violence, it's usually something that's uh, manifested in partners. It's usually something that happens when a partner tries to demonstrate force or exert control over another. And in her case, um, well, in both cases, the male partner was the aggressor and the male partner tried to kill and succeeded in killing the female partner. Yeah, so we have these two cases, uh, two women killed within days of each other, both documenting their divorces on social media. Is it just a coincidence that this happened so close together, would you say? I don't think it's a coincidence. Um, there are so many striking similarities that it just doesn't strike me as a coincidence. The fact that the most striking thing is that the two women had a history of sharing the relationship, that really close relationship with people over social media. And they weren't shy about it. There are so many videos and they go into details. Uh, they talk about the abuse that they endured. They talk about how their family reacted to the divorce. Um, it's striking. That part is striking. It's also striking that these women are both women of color. In Sonia's case, it's widely known that South Asian women are one of the demographics of women who um, underreport incidents of domestic violence for whatever reason. Um, they might not be aware that there are resources, for example, to help them, so they don't seek them out. Um, so because there are so many similarities, I don't think it's a coincidence. I do think it's reflective of a larger trend. Obviously, they had a lot of followers and friends and family were following along with these videos. But Yelena, do you think the exes uh, were also watching these videos and that that may have actually led up to the to the murders? Yeah, I think that's totally possible to say. I'm not a prosecutor or a judge or anything, but I do think it's notable that these women have died after having made these videos, right? Um, they made these videos for a long time. Some of the videos go back to January. Um, in Sonia's case, she's been doing it since her divorce in December. Um, 
one of her friends told me that her ex-husband probably learned that she would be moving back to Tennessee through one of the videos because it was just available to him in that moment. And that's when he decided to strike at that moment because he thought it would mm. be his life last chance. And again, so, just watching the videos, it's just so, so heartbreaking because these are such vibrant, happy women that had such futures ahead of them. Uh, Yelena, I know you've been working hard on, on these cases uh, and these stories. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.